Welcome to the hands-on portion of these videos where I'll give you a walkthrough of the GIS laboratory exercise. To get started, I've got ArcGIS Pro open and I'm logged into my organizational account. If you need instructions on how to do that particular task, check out this card for instructions on how to do so. To start the lab, I'm going to create a new project using a map template. And if you've watched other videos of mine, um, you know that I like to always work in my C temp directory for these demonstrations as it makes for a nice short path on a Windows file system to find things. And in fact, I'm already set to go C temp. So I'll select that folder. I'm not going to create a new folder and I'll call this working with data. And I should mention that the specific steps I'm going to show you with the Hurricane Dorian exercise actually require about 20 gigabytes of disk space. Um, I'm going to download a huge amount of imagery, even though I'm only going to use a tiny little fraction of it. But I just want to let, make you aware of that. Of course, you don't need to download that much on your system, but that's just a heads up there. So here I have my basic map template. And if you're not familiar with where the study area, the Bahamas and Hurricane Dorian, this is the United States, of course, and I'm going to zoom in kind of near Florida. And it's an area roughly about here where um, I'm going to download data sets. Now, a little trick. If you have a slow system, a slow internet connection, um, for example, when I make these videos, my computer actually struggles with the rec video um, software, recording software. Little tricks you can do, just turn things off. If you don't need to look at the base map, just turn it off and so forth. And you can also use these buttons down here to pause uh, the drawing of the map and so forth. So let's move on. So the first part of the exercise asks you to download some ArcGIS online data sets. And this can be a useful thing to see what others out there maybe have already created that you can use. So to do that, I have the catalog view open and I'm going to go over here where it says portal. Now, what I first see is basically all the things for my account in my organizational um, ArcGIS on organizational account. But what I want to do is click on this button here. It says ArcGIS online. And I want to go out and look at what others in the ArcGIS online community maybe have already created for my study area. So I'm interested in Hurricane Dorian. So I'll type that in as a search. And you can see here with that search term, I get a whole bunch of different things that come back. And as per what these videos have talked about with metadata, Metadata can be anything. So this is telling me that this one is a story map. This one is telling me it's a web map. They have different icons. This one's another story map. This one's called a tile layer or a bunch of images. This one's called a feature layer. And on and on these go. Now, this is where it'll take a little skill and practice to find something that actually could be useful for what you're trying to do and it could be hit or miss. You can load a data set in. It doesn't look any good and so forth. Now I'm going to look through this and this one caught my attention when I was preparing this hurricane Dorian and it's a web map, meaning that it's, as it says, it's a map that's on the web with a bunch of layers. And if I move my mouse over and click on the path, Because I'm already logged into my organizational account, it kind of takes me in and it shows me that this map contains these data layers. And the NGA stands for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. So that's a reliable source. And this metadata here, even just the layer names, which way did the hurricane go, observed, position, track, winds, and so forth, that could be helpful for giving me some context in my study area. So I'm going to use this layer. I'm going to go back over to ArcGIS Pro 
and a couple ways you can add it. I found the best way is if I right click and do add and open, it's going to add a new map into my ArcGIS Pro document. So I'll go ahead and do that. And you can see here from the web map that's been added to ArcGIS Pro, I get some useful data sets that give me sort of the big picture about the track of the hurricane, its intensity, and other information. And this is the area that I'm going to focus more on with additional data sets that I'll show you how to download in just a minute. So that's an example of finding an ArcGIS online resource. I'm going to move on now to the next part of the lab where I have to find two vector data sets. And for that part of the lab, I'm going to use the websites that you saw earlier in this video. Specifically, I'm going to use the humanitarian data exchange for the Bahamas, and I've already drilled down to the geo data. Now, in disaster management, basic reference data sets you use would include something like the roads. Roads are a pretty fundamental data source, how you're going to transport relief supplies, survivors, and so forth. So that's that'll be a good one for my lab and for my study area. And there's also this one, the Bahamas buildings, which can be very helpful for letting me see what buildings are there and how maybe they were damaged. And that'll make more sense in just a moment when I download the raster data sets. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at these. Now again, with the idea of metadata, I've got a description here, tells me a little bit about it. I've got some keyword tags. And if you're new to GIS, it'll be good to learn what these acronyms are. KML, that's Google Earth. Um, a geo package, I believe that is for some open source data sets. Someone who no knows more about that can leave a comment in the video. Shapefile, though, I know very well. That is the well-established ESRI data format that's still used widely, even though it's been around for at least 20, 30 years. So I'm going to click on the link. And as per what I talked about earlier, I'm going to look for metadata to figure out if this data set's going to be worth my time. So right off the bat, it's telling me about which attributes it may have. This map here gives me sort of a graphical overview of the coverage. And here's a tab right here that says metadata. And so this gives me some categories of metadata to look at, the source of the data, who contributed it. Now, in this case, this is very important. When was it last updated? It was last updated about six months ago from when I made this video, and that's really good. That means that this is a somewhat reliable data set that's accurate and up-to-date. It's also very good that it's public. It's got an open data license if I want to use it. Um, it's from volunteer geographic information, so it wasn't necessarily created by an authoritative people like from a transportation department, but OpenStreetMap in general has a very good uh, reputation as a data provider, so it's sufficient for my needs. So if I click back over here on data and resources, and even the titles have some metadata, the road lines. Roads are best represented as a line. So now when I was prepping this, I found that to go downloading, what I actually had to do, and this could have just been on my system, but I have to right click on the button download, save link as, and it's already set to go to my C temp directory or my project. I hit save, and I get this warning in Chrome. I honestly didn't know what this was about. If someone watching this video wants to leave a comment um, as to why this is happening, but I'm gonna select keep I don't know if this is something with my system or with humanitarian data exchange. I didn't have time to do a lot of technical troubleshooting with it, but I trust data from here. Of course, don't take any chances on your system if you don't feel comfortable with it. I've downloaded the roads, and now I'm going to go back and grab those buildings, those polygons. And this is a pretty big data set, about 100,000 records are in it, but I'll do a similar process. And I'll just kind of keep, I'll kind of ignore the warning. 
about 10 megabytes of download. And so once you've downloaded your data sets, here I am back in my ctemp directory. You'll do the all familiar process of unzipping things that you download. So I've downloaded them right into ctemp. I'm going to right click first on the buildings. I'm going to use the 7-zip tool to extract these out into their own folder. And I'll do the same thing for lines. And to take a look now inside of these folders, here you have the classic shapefile. If you weren't aware, a shapefile is a collection of three or more files. And in this case, I have five of them. And so that looks pretty good. And the roads, I'll just give it a quick check. That looks good too. So great. So now I've downloaded my two vector data sets and I'm next going to bring them into ArcGIS Pro. So to do that, I'm going to go back over to ArcGIS Pro. And for this, I'm actually going to use my map that I started with. Um, as a reminder, I turned off topographic. I'll even zoom it in a little closer now. Turn it off. Again, I'm just trying to optimize my performance. And to bring my data sets in, I'm going to go, I'm still in catalog here. I'm going to go click on project. And then I'm going to expand where it says folders. And then notice that this folder icon has a house on it. That means it's the home directory. It's where my project is. And there's the two folders I just created by unzipping. Now, if they weren't displaying, something you can do sometimes is right click on your home folder and hit refresh. And that'll bring things up. And I'm going to expand that out. And as per what you learned about earlier in these videos, here's an icon for a feature class, a shapefile feature class. Notice that it has lines. I'm going to hold my left button down, drag it, and put it into the table of contents. And it's zoomed to the extent of that layer. So what I'm going to do is zoom it back in a little bit. And I'm going to do a very similar process now for the, the buildings. I'm going to expand their folder, drag, and then I'll put them underneath the roads. And again, these are somewhat big data sets. Depending on your system, they may take a few seconds, hopefully not minutes, to draw, but that does happen sometimes. I'll zoom in a little closer to look at some of these buildings, and there are ways that you can actually um, improve the performance of large data sets that might take a long time to draw, and I'll talk about those in a moment. Hi, this is Brian Tomaszewski. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and share this video. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking the notification icon to stay up to date on new videos from this channel. Thanks for watching.